I'm Saturday hauling for you guys today and I'm gonna start off with a repurchase and this is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. One of the best, most affordable brow pens that you can buy. It's also the best brow pen I've tried across all price points. Um, I've always really wanted to try the Suku one because it's got this little tiny brush on it but I've never pulled the trigger on it. But um, the shade that I repurchased is Ash Brown because this is primarily the one that I use the most. I do use taupe every once in a while for the inner portion of the brow but most recently for convenience purposes I've just been using the ash brown so this is the one that I have in use right now and these do last a pretty good time nice little fine tip applicator there this is the one that I have in use right here but I feel like there's not a lot of product left in here so I went ahead and I got another one of those again that's the NYX lift and snatch brow tint pen which I think they're doing 30% off on their website right now the Black Friday sales this year are so good we are all in trouble <laughs> I also picked up the new melt makeup pore eclipse matte translucent setting powder I really liked the original version of milk's powder a lot and it came with a ton of product and when I'd used that up I actually went to go and try to see to repurchase it again I couldn't find it so then I had learned you know it's like been discontinued so this is their new powder and there is substantially less product in here in comparison to the original so there's 7.65 grams or 0.27 ounces which is not a lot of product that you're getting for a loose powder so I have got the shade translucent light I believe three or four shades available um, I do like the nice compact packaging and I also like the component that they used inside with the half kind of sifter that you can also close because it's really nice to just be able to pop some in the lid or if you're traveling be able to close it up and stuff like that so I really do like how they did the packaging on this so this is the powder that I have got on my face today and I do feel like it has a nice slight blurring effect to it and it also initially goes on pretty matte but it doesn't make my skin look super flat or anything like that um, um, when I first used this I wasn't as crazy about it and I think it's because I wasn't using enough product so I was a little bit heavier handed to get that stronger set on my foundation because I do have a lot of sunscreen and then the foundation so I need an accurate kind of amount of powder um, so I did need to use more of this in comparison to like the Huda Beauty powder or something like that to get that stronger more flawless set without it kind of looking patchy so after the first initial use when I wasn't as crazy about it I used it again with more again product on the brush which is how I used it today and I like it a lot better like that. It does have a little bit of a lightness factor to it. Like, I feel like it lightened up my face a little bit more. So I just kind of tap some in the container there. But it's a really, really finely milled silky powder. My skin does not feel dry from it, which is also very nice. But you can see right there that it does carry a little bit of a light pigmentation to it. I'm, I'm sort of curious on the next shade down. I don't mind that I look quite light or lighter than I normally do um, but I do every once in a while like that extra bit of color like, like something that the Huda Beauty powder gives my skin so I may look into the other one I may not because I do really love the Huda Beauty powder but this one's a talc free formula it's vegan and mica and silica are the first two ingredients in here it says on the packaging that it's made in the USA so again pretty nice powder um kind of expensive for again how much product that you're getting so like the Huda Beauty powder comes with 0.71 ounces in comparison to this one at 0.27 ounces. Something that I haven't tried with that powder is to set underneath the eyes. I might try that. I did, you guys. I went and I tried out the Huda Beauty Press Powder in the Cherry Blossom that I had hauled, I think, a week or two ago. And I used that underneath my eyes by itself. No bueno. <laughs> my eyes looked so, like, crinkly and like heavy and it was just not cute and I also wasn't crazy about it all over the face so I wanted to kind of update on that powder because it was just not what I was hoping it would be. I initially bought it to kind of do touch up for de-shining and stuff when I was in Las Vegas and I remember when I had used it that day like that um, I looked in the mirror at the end of the day and it looked thick kind of where I had applied it and so I just kind of thought maybe that's from, you know, putting it on over other makeup, but it's just not. It's just not a powder for me. <laughs> Absolutely love the loose version of the Huda powder, however. Um, I also picked up this new brow product. It's from Inglot. It's called Plain Soap Brow, and it comes in two shades, a clear and then a brown. I got the tinted brown version of this, and it's got 30 milliliters or one U.S. food ounce is what it says on the packaging. This is what it looks like right here. So you're getting a pretty substantial amount of product in here as well. And this guy here is made 
in Poland is what it says on the packaging. And the product comes in a tin and I am obsessed with this. I have tried so many brow soap, like brow freeze style products. Um, and I do really like the one, I think it's called Brow WC. It's the WB Co Soap Brows Extra Stronghold. I'd been using this one for uh, quite a while or since I had gotten it. You can see there's a substantial dip in there. But depending on kind of how much product you got and then also how much like water you put in it to activate, it would kind of determine how it looked in the brows and it was very kind of, it can be inconsistent, which is I feel the case is with all of the brow soaps that I've ever tried. I really like the Elf version, but same thing. Um, like say after, I don't know, six, seven hours or something like that, your hairs will kind of pop off your skin and you can see like the white from the soap. And so I would mix like a brow powder in there and stuff like that to get some tint in those products. And that does work, but again, um, it just looks a little bit heavier in the brows. So I was still on the search for that perfect kind of brow product. And I was really excited about the Anastasia Brow Freeze when I first bought it. And it just had no hold. Like it didn't do anything for my brows at all. There was no like freezing or holding or anything for me to get my brows to stay kind of up and fluffed. And so I, I wasn't crazy about that one or any other brow products that I've tried similar to that either. I really liked the uh, soap brows from Revolution, our brow wax that you put a little bit of water in the tinted version. That made my brows look really, really good, but it broke my brows out so bad. <laughs> like they were just full of, you know, red bumps. <laughs> so I, I couldn't use that one. So I'm happy to say this is amazing. This is what I have got in my brows today. Um, if you take the lid off here, you can see what the product looks like. And at first I was like, ah, this is gonna be something like Anastasia, it's not gonna be enough, but there's a bit of a tack to this and it kind of dries down. And it's almost really foolproof because it grabs onto the brow hair so well. Um, I did go ahead and buy the clear one on Camerati Cosmetics because they're having a sale and I wanna see what just the clear one will do. Cause this does have quite a bit of pigment to it. There's fragrance in it, but I think it's to kind of mask maybe the smell of the product overall. But to me, it kind of smells like dish soap. <laughs> but I mean, for what it's worth, let me kind of swatch some on my hand here. So you can see the tint. And again, it like dries down. So I just dip a spoolie in there. This is my favorite brow applicator from e.l.f. It's the lift applicator. You can use this end to put the product in and then this end to kind of smash them on your skin. Um, this is a product too that'll fluff out your brows that you don't have to like laminate to the skin if you don't like that look and they hold really, really well. And it doesn't end up kind of popping off your skin when you do like lay them down and notice a bunch of product. It's just a really, really good product. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so if you're into the soap brow thing and you kind of experience some of those same things that I was talking about with other brow soaps, I would give this a try. It's super inexpensive for an ounce of product. I think it was $12, $12 or something like that. So um, again, it's what I have in my brows with the NYX brow pen and that's it. And they just stay held like that for like the whole day and you can't see all this product in your brows either which is something I really really love about it so I'm just over the moon about this so again this is the Inglot Plan Soap Brow in Brown and I do have the clear version on the way so we'll see how that one goes as well and then beauty habit was having a 20 percent off so i placed an order with them i wanted to re-up on one of my favorite fragrances and then i also wanted a larger size of a perfume that they had sent me as a sample in their little sample packs that, that they like to send out with orders which is just amazing so like with this order i have this little bag full of samples um and the fragrance that i repurchased i got this twice i used up an entire one of these and this is the second one and these were both sent in little gift packs from Beauty Habit, usually when I buy the Vanilla Del Madagascar, which is one of my all-time favorite, favorite vanillas. It's one of my daily wearers. I get so many compliments on it. It's like, oh, it smells like a, like an Oreo cookie and it's sweet, but it's not, it's not one of those overly gourmandy sweet scents that'll make you sick. And I think that's because the vanilla is so like pure in it. It's not like a synthetic. It is like a vanilla extract. It's divine. You guys have heard me talk about this for a while. So this guy's almost gone. So I bought another one of the larger bottle of this. Again, one of my all time faves. I don't even know like what number bottle I'm on of this, like maybe seven or eight. It's just so good. I think I forgot to say the brand. It's the Iperfumi Differenzi Vanilla Del Madagascar. 
right here. If you like vanillas that do not smell synthetic or have that like overly sweet scent, you, you'll love that guy. And then this one here is the Eau de Toilette from Outremer Paris. And this is just called Vanille. So again, um, I used up a, a little bottle of this and they sent me both the little bottles like as a kind of gifty type thing with an order. Um, and I love it. It is like a pure, again, pure straight vanilla. It's easy to wear, pleasant. And there's something about this particular vanilla that reminds me of like, I don't know, my childhood some weird way. And I, I'm just really, really like it. Again, it's not one of those that's like overly sickeningly sweet. I like to refer to it because that synthetic sweetness from some perfumes and candles and stuff like that can make me feel really like lightheaded. This is a beautiful straight up um, solid vanilla and it's super inexpensive. I think this was like 30 bucks for a 1.6 fluid ounce bottle. So this is actually what I'm wearing today. This is how the little cover comes. At first I was like, where's the lid? Well, it's right there. <laughs> and it's such a good scent. Again, if you like gourmands or vanillas, this is beautiful and it's it, super inexpensive. So again, that's the Eau de Toilette Vanille from Outremer Paris. I got that again at Beauty Habit. Also from Beauty Habit, I picked up four pieces from the newish kind of collection from Chantecaille called The Wild Horses, and they help support the Wild Horse campaign. And I do not know why, probably because I wanted to get them on sale, but I snoozed on this collection. I was able to get them 20% off when I bought them on the Beauty Habit website, but I missed one. So there's four in total, and the one that I don't have is called Roan, which was the most popular out of the four shades. If anybody wants to sell that one to me, let me know. Because <laughs> I feel like my little horse collection is incomplete and you would think that, you know, being a horse person as I am, that I would have jumped all over this. But I was like, gosh, you know, because they're expensive shadows, I think $56 a piece. So I felt so much better when I got them on sale. <laughs> so I did pick up one of the lipsticks and this is in the shade Laurel. It's got the horse on there. And these lip cheeks from Chantecaille are just divine, divine lip products. They have this beautiful shine. They're moisturizing. They're super easy to wear. I cannot say enough good things about the lip cheeks from Chantecaille. And you can see the horse on the cap right there. If you do some Googling, I know that the lipsticks are more readily available than the shadows, but I've also seen the shadows kind of lingering around. I'll do a search and try to find some online and see if I can't link them down below. Um, but again, this is Laurel. Just a super easy to wear nude rose. And again, the lip cheeks from Chantecaille are amazing. And I've been trying out so many eyeshadows, like trying to use them and get my feel from them and stuff that I haven't even, I haven't even dug into these three shadows from Chantecaille. But we're gonna talk about them and I'm gonna swatch them anyway. <laughs> so these are the Luminescent Eye Shades. Um, they're a baked jelly product. They are made in Italy. There's 0 0.08 ounces of product in here. And this first one is called Pinto, which a Pinto is kind of like a paint horse. It's a a horse of a different color, if you will, and it looks like there is a buckskin or a dun or something like that in terms of horse color on this packaging. This is not a pinto horse. This is either a dun or a buckskin. <laughs> so that, I don't know, I've seen that right off the bat. It's just the little things you notice when you're like a horse person. Anyway, this one is pinto. They're all really pretty. There's two matte shades and there's two like luminescent shiny shades. This is one of the shinier shades and so is the, the roan shade, which that's the one that I'm missing. And there's two horses. I think there's a paint or a pinto on the cover of the roan one. This is pinto and I'm missing roan. You, know, you want to sell roan to me? Let me know <laughs> again. <laughs> And Chantecaille's uh, luminescent eyeshades are their big jelly shades like this. I've got, I think, every single one that they make, except for Roan. <laughs> um, they're just really beautiful, easy to wear shadows. And as you can see right there, that is a beautiful shimmery shadow right there. So that guy, again, is Pinto right there. It kind of appears that they tried to get the right color for Palomino. Um, but I don't think this is a Palomino either. This is what you'd call a Cremello horse. <laughs> um, unless it's a really, really light Palomino where they kind of just have the coloring off in the picture or something like that or made like edit adjustments. Otherwise I would say it's closer to a Cremello is what they call this color, but close. <laughs> and this one here is a light matte beige shade. And I originally thought that I'd use this underneath the brow bone, and I do think that I can, but it's not going to be like a highlighty brow bone where it's going to give me some lift, because you can see right there, it's kind of a, a light to slight mid-tone kind of a beige shade. 
I think this is the one that's the most readily available places, probably because it's the least interesting maybe, but that one right there is Palomino. I'm just gonna call it Cremello. <laughs> right there. And then the last one is Bay, which they did get the color of one of the horses right on this one. So this is a Bay horse right here. It's got that brown with black mane and tail. And this one here actually looks like a dirty buckskin. There's different variations of the buckskin color, and that one looks like a dirty buckskin to me. <laughs> so this one is, again, the shade Bay, and this is also a matte shadow. It's a really pretty color. It's going to look great in the crease. So that one right there is Bay, right there. I also picked up the new Dior High Color Eyeshadow Wardrobe, and it's called 002 Blooming Boudoir. Uh, 0.63 ounces of product in here, and this guy here is made in France. So this is what the box packaging on this guy looks like, and I did purchase their first 10 pan palette that they did like this as well, and I really liked it, so that's why I went in with this one, and the packaging is super pretty. Um, I had actually ordered this a bit ago, and it came super broken. Um, it was on the Ulta website, so I think I used some points when I ordered it as well. So they had to send me a new one. This one, luckily enough, was not broken. The other one was super shattered. So that's kind of what took me so long to kind of haul this one. And usually Dior products come with like a dust jacket. This one does not, and I really wish that it did because this cover on here is like a fabric. And so if I had like shadow or something on my hands and I touched that, it would stain probably like a cloth. So. Um, I need to try to figure out how to do something about that <laughs> because it's like a, um, again, it's like a cloth and it's, especially with makeup-y type stuff, it could potentially get super dirty and stained. Um, and usually Dior products come with like those, you know, velvet sleeves and this one didn't and this one really needed to. <laughs> um, so anyway, there are 10 shades in here. This is the little kind of cover that's on there. And I initially, like when I opened it up, I was like, gosh, that kind of looks bland, kind of looks a little boring, but then I used it and the look was super, super pretty. There are like some pearlescent shimmer shades in here that just are super flattering. I think that if you like a dash of shimmer, but you don't like to be super sparkly, I think this is something that you'd really like. Um, they're pigmented, they blend out really well. Again, when you first look at it, it looks super bland, but it's actually very, very nice. So let's go ahead and give you guys some swatches here. These two shades, I can use both as um, highlight shades on the inner corner and underneath the brow, those first two that I swatched. But yeah, I was I was like not sure like what to expect. I opened it and I was like, gosh, that doesn't look super exciting. And then I used it and I was like, wow, that's like super pretty. And then these guys. I mean, it doesn't always have to be about the most blinding shine, right? <laughs> I also love that Dior is at Ulta now. I think it's wonderful. And then these last two, which both look great in the crease. So those are the swatches right there of the new Dior. I'm trying not to touch the, again, like the fabric, I will stain it. <laughs> um, eyeshadow palette in 002 Blooming Boudoir right there. And again, it doesn't look like super exciting, but it does look really pretty on. I also picked up the new Patrick Ta for Face Major Holiday Face Palette. And I originally seen this inside of Sephora before I went to Vegas. So I was like, oh, I'll maybe just purchase it there or when the sale starts, right? And it was sold out everywhere in Las Vegas. <laughs> so I wasn't able to get it there. And then it was sold out online. And I got serious FOMO after that. And I was able to find it at Kohl's. And it's still available at Kohl's. So if you're after this palette or, or can't find it, they have it on the Kohl's website. So Kohl's.com. And mine did come broken. One of the shades was broken. And I couldn't figure out on the Kohl's website how to like get a hold of somebody. But um, I cleaned it up really well because there was stuff everywhere. And I repressed or tried to repress as best as I could the shimmer shades. Because it was the little uh, square shimmer shades uh, that were broken here. Um, and I think I did a decent job, but anyway, it's this guy right here in the pink packaging and there's a total of eyeshadow four times 
0.059 ounces or 1.68 grams and then it says blush cream three times 0.1 ounce and powder three times 0.11 ounce of product in there. I love the hot pink shiny packaging. Gets full of fingerprints, but um, I've been wearing these blushes quite a bit. I forgot to list, I think in last week's video, um, my lip and the blush I was wearing. I was wearing a combination of those two blushes and Snob Lipstick from MAC, which is also what I have on my lips today as well. I've just kind of really been into the pinks, which it's kind of my favorite is a baby cool pink pink on cheeks and lips. Um, so you got the two creams up here and I have used those as well. And I do get along with the cream um, cheek products from Patrick Ta a lot better than others. Like for patting over already set foundation, it does a pretty good job. I like to use a slanted um, BK Beauty brush. This 109 is like my favorite for both cream highlight and blushes. And these shimmers over here, so these ones are slightly broke, so I have to try to be gentle and not like kind of tip it. I'm scared they're like fall out. They have got the most beautiful sparkle. Again, I almost missed out on this. I wasn't going to get it. I wasn't going to do it. And then it became FOMO. And then I seen it in the store. And I was like, oh, I got to find it. I'm going to set it down while I swatch these because I don't want to tip it sideways. Um, so beautiful. They are so pretty. So those are the sparkly shades. I can use them directly over a sticky base as a shadow, um, but they can also be used as like a topper. They're shinier over a tacky base though. And then the creams do have the little window in there. And I'll swatch those first. They have really good pigmentation, as do the powders. I went in heavy into these blushes, not thinking, and was like, holy smokes. They are very, they're soft and they're very pigmented. <laughs> so I picked up too much product right out the gate, but. And I believe Patrick Ta likes to put the powder down first and then tap the cream over the top to get like this shine on the cheek and I've done it that way too and it does look really pretty you just have to be a little bit careful kind of to not pick up a bunch of your base or the powder underneath it but very pretty so glad I was able to get it again still available at Kohl's I just looked I also picked up the other Melt Cosmetics Christmas Town eyeshadow palette so they originally launched the first one and then announced this one and I was super excited about it because I love the packaging, I love the theming, and I love the first palette. And this one here I have worn several, several times since I've gotten it. It's got great quality. They have definitely improved upon their shimmery shadows. I know for a while there they had like a pressing issue and a crumbly type of issue and stuff like that. These are really, really nice. So 18.82 grams or 0.66 ounces of product in here, which is a pretty good size um, amount of product and this is made in the USA again I love this packaging and I'll put it side by side next to the one I hauled a week or two ago as well so you can see them together um, it's a standalone for me and like upon first glance of the colors you would think gosh interesting colors together right but I've worn the greens with the reds, just the purples and the reds, just the greens. It doesn't matter what color combination that I pick out of this palette. I love the look every single time. So again, it's kind of a unique color combination. Look at how cute this packaging is though. I just love it. The shadows are also magnetized inside of the palette so you can switch them out or move them around too if you would like. Um, I'll probably just leave them like this because I love, again, the color combinations that come out of there and the uniqueness of these. So we have got these three kind of really sparkly shades and then this one which is kind of a shimmer and then you have got the four, five, six matte shadows. So I've used this one underneath the brow and it's got this slight bit of a blue tint to it but it looks really good underneath the brow. Great pigmentation. And then these next ones. This one here is pressed a little hard, but a flat shader kind of grinded in, picks up the product really well, and it's a finer, kind of glazier um, finish to it. It looks really good both underneath the brow and on the front of the lid. And 
and then these last two shades. Yeah, the shimmer in these two and this green one are so like pearly and sparkly. They're just really, really pretty. I just love, I just love these palettes from Melt. I love the packaging. I love the looks that come out of them. Let me grab the other ones so you can see them next to each other. So on top you've got Christmas Town and then on the bottom you have got Halloween Town. And again, I love both of them. Same thing with the bottom. Unique color combination. Love the pairings. Um, I use both of these standalone when I use them. And I think Melt has a really good sale on their website right now. I'm not sure if these ones are included, but they're having a really wicked Black Friday sale. Another palette that I wasn't going to originally purchase, but then went ahead and did for the packaging. And then also it just looked super sparkly and pretty and like easy. And that's the Charlotte Tilbury Beautyverse palette. So this is her holiday launch, which they're also, the again, the Black Friday sales, they're so good this year. Um, there are nine shades that are 0 0.03 ounces each. This is the box packaging. So I loved, I loved the actual packaging. It is super pretty, super sparkly. It has stars on it. It's just very, very pretty. Let me tell you where this is made real quick. Um, made in Italy is what it says on the packaging. And originally I wasn't, I wasn't going to get it for one. I didn't think that there was going to be a shade kind of deep enough for the crease. Um, and I wasn't sure about these shimmery shades, but they have that fine sparkle to them. They are pressed kind of hard. So a kind of stiff flat shader over a direct tacky base is going to give you the best kind of sparkle, which is how I typically use shadows like that anyway. Um, and then you've got these matte shadows that are like creamy mattes, right? And I went into those thinking they were going to be hard to pick up on a brush and they're not. They're like a softer creamy matte formula they were easy super super easy to blend and work with when I use this though I do like to put a little bit of like a black shadow in the outer corner crease area just to deepen it up a little bit because everything is pretty mid-toned or lighter in here but again I was surprised by how much I enjoyed this one as well so based off the little uh, plastic that was inside the palette they're calling those future mattes so there are four future mattes and five crystal glows um, from experience uh, with Charlotte Tilbury shadows this formula is a new formula for Charlotte Tilbury and it's a nice one so just very easy to work with. Feels like silk. Which made me think that they weren't going to be like pigmented enough, but they have got pretty good pigmentation to them. And they blend out again so easy. You can see that because it's got like that creamy matte, or they're calling it future matte formula, they're not flat. There's just this slight bit of a luminosity to it but no visible sparkles or anything like that and then these sparkly shades and they're suspended pretty good in the formula too like this one and this one have got a little bit more of a creaminess to them than the, the other two or a little bit drier feeling but brands are getting really good about suspending sparkle in their shadows. And then this last one. Really pretty bronze. So again, that is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautyverse uh, palette right there. It can be standalone, but I do like it a little bit better with a something like a matte black again in the crease. I also got the new Danessa Myricks Lightwork palette. I seen this when I was down in Vegas and they had one in stock and I was originally just going to order it but I had to have it right then and there <laughs> because it was so shiny. So I got this guy right here and this is what the packaging looks like. I have been pairing this with a lot of different palettes or to give a amp up some other like shimmers or anything like that. It is such a pretty one if you like shimmer, shine, uh, multi-dimensional, multi-chrome style metallic shadows. <laughs> That's a lot of adjectives. <laughs> and it does say illuminating eye and face pigments is what it says on the packaging. I love that um, she switched it up with this pretty color packaging instead of just the black kind of style packaging. There are 10 shades that are 1 gram or 0 0.035 ounces. There are 8 shades that are 1.1 grams or 0 0.038 ounces for a total of 18.8 grams or 0.66 ounces of product. And this guy here is made in China. So here is the palette. It is a cardboard with a magnetic closure and kind of this um, 
plate on the front of it. And then here's the back. And then there is a mirror in there and it says I am right there. And then I think you're supposed to pick um, one of the words I am resilient, I'm radiant. That's some of the shade names. But uh, I think I've used every shade in here. So beautiful. Let's just get straight to swatching. Again, um, another formulation that's really good about suspending sparkles in there. Um, there's a tackiness to quite a few of the shades. I would recommend like a flat, stiffer shader brush or either your finger um, to put them on because again, the formula is thick. They almost, they have a creamy factor to them. Like some of them I would almost call them a cream, but they're not all like that. But that's what suspends that sparkle really well, you know, and gets like the ultimate shine out of them. And then these next guys, we'll just do the single ones first. Then we'll go back to those double pins. This is such a pretty palette. Definitely not a standalone. I mean, you could if you really like shine in all of your shadows. You know, there's depth in the palette, but I mostly pair this with other palettes. But can you imagine though if you took I like all the deep shades and because there's like some like dual chromey, multi-chrome style shades in here, You'd have a lot of different like colors and shines going on on your eyes. It might look quite pretty. Maybe I'll try it. And then these two, followed by these two. These are kind of um, getting into kind of some multi-chrome style shadows. I'll read like the formulas on that little plastic thing here when I'm done. I think it says them in the back too, but. It doesn't say it on the back. <laughs> so if you want to keep like the finishes, you'd keep the little plastic deal. I'm sure there's a really good sale on this somewhere as well. I think I actually recall seeing one and I was like, ah, I should have waited. <laughs> and then these last two here. Oh, right, they're so shiny. They're so pretty. <clears throat> Such pretty shadows. Let me set this down real quick. Kind of get you uh, another close up of it. It's like a box of chocolates. <laughs> so the plastic says soft energy is the top row, bold energy in the middle, and then grounding energy on the bottom. So you've got heavenly halos, fusion flakes, Silk press shifters, whipped powder shifters, um, and these ones, molten metals, suede shimmers, cushion chromes on the bottom. Again, that is the new Lightworks palette from Danessa Myricks right there. And next up, we have got Pat McGrath Holiday. I originally was going to buy the bundle with all of the face palettes, all the eyeshadow palettes, and the double palettes, like the larger ones. Uh, when it first launched and then I was like no just wait Black Friday's coming up and she has really good Black Friday sales so that's what I did and I got the bundles I think I was in the 40% off tier with the bundles that I got and then also one of the face palettes so I got all of this I think for I think it was like just over $150 or something like that. And I'm pretty sure that sale is still going on as well. So hopefully these swatches will be helpful for you guys. So let's start off with the face palette. I originally was gonna get all three cause that's just how, that's just who I am as a person. <laughs> but I was like, just be reasonable. I'll get the one that you can wear, you know, the lighter one. Cause there's some, the, I, I could tell that some of the bronze shades were just gonna be too deep for me. Um, I could, I think I could pull off all the blushes but it was the bronzer I was like, so I just got the lighter one. And this one is called Divine Blush and Bronze and Glow Trio in Forever Nude. There's a total of 10.3 grams or net weight 0.36 ounces, which across three um, face products, that's not a lot of product um, that you're getting. And this guy here is made in Italy. So this is the box packaging right here. And across the different palettes, there is some differentiation in terms of the color bow that may help you tell them apart. I probably won't ever memorize that with the eyeshadow palette, so I'll still have to open them. <laughs> um, but this one here has got the pink bow on it. And I believe there's some repeats, probably are some repeats, but I have got this palette on my face today, the bronzer, the highlighter, and the blush, and all three of the products are super pretty. Um, the blush on me is a bit lighter, 
Um, and I think that's just because I've been into some really intense blush recently, so it just feels lighter, but it still is a really pretty pink. And the bronzer's pretty as well. So you've got cardboard packaging with a magnetic closure. And then here's your bronzer. You can see I've used this quite a few times so far. And then your blush, which is kind of a warm pink, baby pink shade, and then your highlighter. And the highlighter doesn't have any chunks or sparkles or anything like that. It's a really smooth, just like a pure shine highlighter. And I do have all three of these on my face today. And it does look quite light, so <laughs> I am a little interested in the middle shade one. Probably won't though, because I don't think the highlighter will work for me. So I'll just stick with the one that I got. So that one again is the Forever Nude, which is the lightest of the three face palettes that came out. Now we'll get into the five pan palettes. So these are the Bijou Brilliance eyeshadow palettes. Um, there's a total of four grams or 0.14 ounces of product across five shades. And these palettes are made in Italy. So the box packaging again mimics the actual packaging. And I have not worn all of these just yet, but this is that good formula that comes in the five pans, really silky, really easy to use. So this first palette is Lunar Nightshade. This is what I've got on my eyes today. So this one's got the blue bow. And here are the shades. I do not have the matte on, which is this burgundy color, but that would look really good in the crease. Um, this is a beautiful shadow formula. Again, these ones are made in Italy. Um, but these are really nice. And then this last one. Very pretty, right? So that guy there is the Lunar Nightshade right there. This next one is Sunset Romance and this has got the pink bow on it. This is also standalone for me because this shade right here is light enough to work as a highlight. They did really well in that aspect. I can use I feel like I can use um, all four of these by themselves just by looking at them. It's like I said, I haven't worn all of them just yet, but same formula across all four palettes. And then this one. So that one again is in Sunset Romance. The next one is Bronze Ecstasy. It's got like a golden bow on the front. Such a pretty formula. They're like so soft. And then this last one. So that guy right there is Bronze Ecstasy. And then the fourth five pan is called Bordeaux Bliss. And it's got the purple bow on the front. They're just so soft. Like I'm hardly putting any pressure on the pan to pick that up. I'm trying to get them all kind of in a row. But I might run out of room. And then this last one. We'll just put it right there. So that one there is called Bordeaux Bliss. So kind of a bluey cool cranberry, a warm one, more neutral, and then I guess this one leads to kind of cranberry too. But really, really pretty formula in these five pens. And then we've got the two blush and eyeshadow palettes. So this first one is called Star Struck Splendor. And this one here, so the blushes are 0.28 ounces and they're made in Italy. But then the eyeshadows are made in the USA 
and imported, and it says of U.S. and imported ingredients, and then the palette itself is assembled in the Dominican Republic. So the shadow formula in these larger palettes are different than the five pans. Um, I experienced, in comparison to the one that I'd used today, I experienced more fallout in the larger palettes, and um, they were just a little bit... They're not quite as soft as the ones that are in the five pans. Now, that being said, I was over the moon with the look that I got out of this palette here uh, yesterday. There's something about this shade called Opalescent Moonstone in here that had the most beautiful shimmer to it. Even though it was a drier formula, I had to pick up on, like, on a flat shader and pack it over a tacky base. It was so pretty on. So this is the packaging on this guy. It's got the purple bow on the front. And then I really like that this has got like a beveled edge. It just makes it feel fancier than just a flat kind of cardboard like the other ones are like that. I wish they would have done this like slight, I don't know if you can see it, this slight bevel on the edges all the way around the palette. It just, again, it feels more luxe like that. Um, these are a heavier kind of cardboard. They feel um, a little bit more substantial, I feel like, than some in the past. They feel nice, even though they're still a like thick cardboard style packaging. Um, that's what the cover looks like. There's the back, and here are your shades. So the blushes are beautiful. I love the blushes. I probably have, yeah, I've got them somewhere, probably two times over my collection. I love this color right here though. This is Nymphet and Coral Cosmos, and I would call them satin finishes. And we'll get into the shadows here. I just noticed a difference between the five pan and these ones. The five pan is just, they're just softer shadows. And I had, for whatever reason, you would think I would have had more fallout with those ones, but I, I seem to have less, which is interesting. Look how beautiful oh, this shade. It is so pretty. It's got like a translucent base, but there's like green, gold, and pink in it, and maybe some slight purple. It's so pretty. And then these ones. You can kind of get a cool or a warm look out of this palette. Yeah, yesterday, um, it was one of those makeup days where I was like, oh, I don't want to wash my look off. Because <laughs> it looked really pretty, you know? It was out of this palette. And this last one. This is really soft. This is much softer than those other shiny shades. I didn't wear this one yesterday. I wore that lighter kind of mint green, which has got a little bit more grit to it. But, yeah. So this guy here is the Starstruck Splendor palette right there. I'm going to try to swatch the other one with this one up so you can see the differences together. The next one is called Jeweled Temptation. and um, Same style packaging. Uh, it's got the purple bow on it with the beveled edges. Again, it feels nice in the hand. Same amount of product in here as well. And also, um, it says on here, made in USA of US, imported ingredients with the shadows and assembled in the Dominican Republic with blushes made in Italy. I've not worn this one yet, but I wanted to swatch all of this today especially because I'm having a heart, what the heck? I'm gonna put my finger in one of these. Um, because they're having such a good sale on the Pat McGrath website. So you can kind of see whether or not you wanna grab any of these products. You can get them on a really good deal, you know? And both of these are standalone for me because this light shade has got enough like shine in it um, to be highlighty. So those are the blushes, warmer kind of peachier tones. And then into the shadows. Yeah, it's so funny. I was like so happy that I had waited <laughs> for the sale because it's such a good deal in comparison to, you know, the full price. But I'm going to fit these on here. I probably have to go to the side a little bit. And then these next ones. Gosh, pretty, very pretty. Put them right here. And then this last shade. Same thing with this one. This one feels really soft. 
just like the green in the other one. So that one right there, again, is Jeweled Temptation. And there, let's see, I'm gonna put this down. So you can kind of see all the tones together if you were thinking about just picking up one of them. I'm glad I've got them both. They both look very pretty. So that's everything that I purchased. I did get in some wonderful PR. This first one is so beautiful. This is another palette where I did the eye look and I didn't want to like wash it off because it was so pretty. So it's from What's Up Beauty. They came out with a new eyeshadow palette called Dragon Eye. Um, love the theming. I'm somebody who likes dragons and unicorns and things with wings. <laughs> So I loved the whole theming behind this. It is available right now. It's talc-free, clean, cruelty-free, sustainable, made in Italy. There's blinding and shifty shimmers, creamy mattes, um, clean beauty made in Italy and formulated without talc using clean ingredients, um, work of art packaging. I do love the packaging. even though It's a cardboard with a magnetic closure, but I love the artwork. And it says sustainability. Um, with an ongoing commitment to sustainability, our stunning packaging component is also eco-friendly being made from 30% post-consumer recycled material. Um, so I like everything about that in addition to the fact that the quality of the eyeshadows is so good. Like all of their eyeshadows that um, they've come out with are really, really good. What's Up Beauty is another one of my favorite indie brands. They make amazing handmade Japanese makeup brushes as well. They also recently came out with some beautiful, beautiful highlighters, so the Serengeti highlighters. They're stunning. I can wear both of them and they're so pretty. No like chunks or sparkles or anything, just real smooth like shine. So yeah, What's Up Beauty comes out with some great stuff. So the box packaging looks like this. Again, made in Italy. There's a total of 10.3 grams or 0.36 ounces of product. So that's 0 0.03 ounces is per shade because there are 12 eyeshadows in here. I like how like thin and compact um, these palettes are. Like super easy to travel with. This is a one and done for me as well. The dragon on here you can see is really pretty and shifty. It's like um, embossed like there's some texture to the dragon on the cover. And then this is what the back looks like. I adore adore this color story and I'm afraid if I try to bend the cover all the way back I might crack the binding which I do not want to do so we'll just go like this. Um, great quality, like I said. And I think there are a couple shades I might try to get a mirror out to see the shiftiness because there are like some multi-chrome style shades in here. And everything works so nice together. They're having a good sale too. I was like, gosh, I was really tempted to pick up another one of these and another one of the highlighter. Like, look how pretty that is. So pretty. And then these next ones. You guys will have to let me know how you guys have done shopping um, this weekend. <laughs> so much temptation. And then these four. This looks very, very green in the viewfinder, but it looks more like bluish purple in different light. So pretty. Let me grab a mirror real quick. You can you guys tell? Oh gosh, it's hard to put my arm out direction. Anyway, there are some shifts <laughs> if you can see them. But that is the new Dragon Eye palette from What's Up Beauty. Huge thank you to What's Up Beauty for sending me over their latest launch. It is really pretty. Another new brand, they reached out to me and then I kind of clicked and looked at the pictures of the palette and it looked like something that I would really like. So I said, yeah, I'll try her out. So this is a new to me brand. It's an indie brand as well. It's called Wicked Widow. And I think there's a couple of palettes that they have available, but this one here is the Graveyard Smash palette. So this is the little card that came inside. And this is what is on the back for kind of their information and stuff. And there's a sleeve that mimics the actual packaging. And this guy here, it does not say which, it does not say on the packaging where this guy is made. So I might have to check on the website, but it is a cardboard palette with a magnetic closure. 
and then you've got um, the monsters, right? Is this the monsters? <laughs> And then inside there is a mirror and you've got eight shadows. It's a standalone for me as well. They did a good job curating it. And I wore this palette and they're pigmented. They blend out really well. Um, I put this one in the crease and this one did stain my eyelids. So just a, an FYI about that guy. But let's give you guys some swatches. Very, very soft for like a burgundy matte shadow like that. Usually they're a little bit drier feeling. This orange too. Very, very smooth to the touch. And they worked really well. And I like the color story. I would say that the finishes are kind of standard um, finishes with the matte and then the kind of shiny metallics. I don't really get a ton of duochrome or no multi-chrome out of there, but they're still really pretty shadows. So again, this is a brand called Wicked Widow, and this is their Graveyard Smash. And a huge thank you to Wicked Widow for reaching out and sending me this palette. Next up, Pixie Beauty sent me over a PR package, which I was super excited to get. I love getting these large bottles of the Glow Tonic, and they have my name on them. I believe this is the fourth one of these. Um, that I will have gotten. I use this toner morning and night. It is a 5% glycolic acid toner. And then this one's got a pump on it because it's like the larger uh, 17 fluid ounce 500 ml bottle, which you can get on the Pixie Beauty website. This summer I was kind of going back and forth between this and the Glow Recipe. And I think it's because I use tretinoin and the glycolic um, on my skin in addition to that with being out in the sun and sweating. Like, I know sweating definitely had something to do with it. Like, when it's really hot, it was kind of would make my skin itch. So I kind of tapered off and just was using this once a day in the summertime because of the heat and the sweat. But now I'm back to, because it's colder, I'm not sweating as much. And I'm back to using it morning and night. But just a product I absolutely love. I purchased this. I like the um, little rounds for travel. And the, I've got the smaller bottles of the liquid as well. It's just an amazing toner. So a huge thank you to Pixie Beauty for sending this guy over. I look forward to it every year. And lastly, I got in a package from Laura Mercier. Um, it says, Tara, you are fated to be flawless. I always love, like you guys know, I love when they put my name on stuff. I, it makes me feel extra special. <laughs> so they sent me over three pieces from their holiday collection. This first one is the Guiding Star translucent loose setting powder which this is a powder I also really love I love the pink version of this and it's always sold out I hope that they restock it I used up the one that I had in my um, collection but I've also got this powder in several different versions this is the original and I've been through several of these as well so there's 29 grams or one ounce of product in here and this one here comes with the large Laura Mercier puff and then it comes with the kind of limited edition gold top packaging right here and then they also sent the glow and go forth tinted moisturizer blush collection so this has got three of their newish um cream blushes or moisturizer blushes they're tinted so they're very light and i'm not going to swatch these ones because i think i'm going to gift them um this is a product that i don't typically tend to use but people who like a real light flush and like to use a lot of creams and stuff like that or like those tinted style products would probably really like this formula so this guy's gonna make a nice little gift for somebody so that's what I'm gonna do with this guy and then there's also the cosmic stars caviar stick eye trio so there are three um, minis of the caviar sticks in here and I like to wear these when I go like to the lake or something. I wore the matte ones that they came out with and they just last really well in the water because they, they dry down so nice. So let me swatch these guys. We've got Onatral, which is a neutral kind of taupe. Let me kind of swatch it down here where there's a, not as much like pigment on my skin. It's a very natural type of color and there's definitely some playtime with these as well, but they make great bases and I feel like for long term wear that they're really good because they wear really well. So Unatral is a matte and then we've got Amethyst which has got some pearl in it. It's like a purple pearl. And then the third one in the mini set is called Strapless and this has also got some pearl in it. It's like a brown. So that one right there again is called um, strapless and these caviar sticks for being a cream stick product they last a really long time and what I mean by that is 
um, in the stick packaging, they don't dry out fast. I've got some of these minis that are years old and they're still creamy. So they've got good like longevity to them as far as, you know, being in your collection. I'll kind of blend them out a little bit too. I think quite a few people like to use Anatrell as a shadow base. So those are, or that is the Cosmic Stars Caviar Stick Eye Color Trio um, right there. And a huge thank you to Laura Mercier for sending me over pieces from their holiday collection. And that's everything, everything <laughs> that I have for my video today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later. Bye.